How's it going everyone, it's Avi from Weather Sponge 5000 and in this video we're going to forecast the type of conditions you should expect in each region of the lower 48 of the United States for the 2022-2023 winter season. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather related content. So let's begin by taking a look at the temperature anomaly forecast for this winter which plays a major role in terms of the type of conditions you should experience this winter and as you can see for much of the northern United States, temperatures are expected to be well below average this winter. This includes a lot of the northern mid uh, Midwest states as well as the northern Great Lakes states, including Michigan, Wisconsin, and even extending as far south as Chicago and Ohio, as well as Indiana. So the reason that I'm expecting the temperatures to be much colder than average for a lot of the northern United States is as a result of a La Nina that's expected to stay around for the early part of the winter and even as we head closer and closer into the later months of the winter we're expecting the transition into a new more of a neutral enzo pattern which do, still does promote colder than average conditions for much of the northern united states so as a result we should expect a lot more jet stream dips a lot more polar vortexes this winter for a lot of northern um, states of the United States and we even see that this cold extends as far east as the northeast as well while the sea surface temperatures just off the northeast coast are warmer than average I do expect the sea surface temperatures off the east coast to fall more back down to earth closer to average as we continue to see more jet stream dips induced by a La Nina and a neutral pattern that's expected to build this winter so as a result for much of the northern United States, you should expect temperatures that are well below average this winter. And as a result, that should promote more snowstorms rather than rainstorms, which should make it a more snowier than average winter, most likely for a lot of the northern United States, since there's going to be less rain events and it's going to be cold enough to support for more snow events to happen for a lot of the northern United States. And take a look further southward, you see that I'm expecting temperatures well above average for obvious reasons because for one thing is that um like i said a la nina is expected to build for this the, um during the early winter months and then during the later winter months will eventually transition into a neutral phase but for the most part we should um but for um during a neutral and a la nina phase we typically do see much warmer than average conditions for a lot of the southern united states um um, at, because there's not really um, there's not really a subtropical jet that's expected to move through the southern United States that would cool down conditions that, and it's typically a lot drier during a La Nina or a neutral winter for a lot of the southern United States especially the southwestern portion of the United States which of course would promote a lot more short wave radiation from the sun to uh, get absorbed by the surface which would overall make it a much warmer winter as a result of of, um, during a La Nina pattern or a neutral pattern and of course you guys are currently in a very severe drought for lost su the southwestern portion of the United States and a uh, drought is very difficult to get rid of uh, within um, as it as typically droughts don't go away overnight it takes several months for eventually the climate to adapt to more moist and average conditions. And since it's expected to be so dry as a result of this severe drought you're dealing with, it's expected to be a lot warmer because the soil, um, dry soil heats up a lot faster than moist soils. And since the soil for a lot of southwestern United States is much drier than average and doesn't have much moisture with it, expect temperatures to be well above average this winter as I don't expect this drought to go away, especially since we're expecting to experience a La Nina, which pretty much will compound the um, which will compound drought like conditions for the temperatures to be much warmer than average for a lot of southern United States. And this includes the southeast as well, because the sea surface temperatures for much of the southeast coast are well above average. And I do believe that it'll stay that way as a direct result 
of La Nina type conditions bringing warmer than average conditions for a lot of the southern United States and since we're in a positive multi-decadal Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation sea surface temperatures are typically always much warmer than average which has a direct result with the air temperature as studies show that typically when the sea surface temperatures are much warmer than average for the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic it's typically a lot uh, the winter is typically a lot warmer than average for the southeast United States so as a result I do expect temperatures to be warmer for the southeast United States as well now moving on to our another major factor that really determines what type of conditions we should expect this winter for the United States and that's the precipitation anomaly forecast and you see that majority of the United States I'd say nearly 75% of the lower 48 of the United States should expect precipitation that's um, that's well above average or at least above average and this has a direct result of a La Nina that's expected to build as well as a neutral phase later during the winter months which will promote more jet stream dips for more troughs to move through the United States including the East Coast and typically during a La Nina it's typically well and um, we typically see much more moisture than average for the northwestern portion of the United States as well as the Ohio River Valley states including the southeast um, as a result of of a prevailing pacific jet moving through the pacific northwest which brings more storm systems along the coast and we typically see a lot more jet stream dips that pretty much peak when it comes to its dip right around the ohio river valley which does bring a lot more storm systems than average for a lot of the east coast so as all, well, i do expect a lot more precipitation than average so expect, expect more rainstorms and snowstorms for a lot of the northern pretty much the entirety of the northern united states as well as portions of the southeast and it doesn't and it isn't and it doesn't help that a lot of the sea surface temperatures just off the east coast are a lot warmer than average so that will promote more lift and convection since of course warm air is a lot less dense than cold air so we should expect water um the water vapor along the atlantic to rise a lot more rapidly for more convection and rain and rain and snow activity to occur along the east coast as a result as a direct result of an enhanced amount of convection thanks to warmer than average sea surface temperatures making the air and water vapor a lot less dense for that air to rise and eventually condense so taking a look at now the southwestern portion of the united states you see that there's the only area where i'm expecting the precipitation to be um to be well below average and this of course is a direct result of a severe drought that's going on i do expect it to continue on into the winter months especially since we are expecting a la nina which already brings much drier than average conditions for a southwestern portion of the united states so i do expect much drier than average conditions um, to occur for a lot of the southwestern united states including texas new mexico arizona the southern portion of california nevada as well as the extreme southern portions of utah and colorado as well so expect a much drier than average winter for a lot of the um, southwestern portion of the united states now moving on to my overall winter forecast for 2022 and 2023 so um let me first start with the northeast i'm expecting much more snowstorms than average for a lot of the northeast because i do expect an enhanced amount of jet stream dips to occur this winter as a result of a la nina and the neutral pattern that's expected to build which typically does bring a lot more jet stream dips and troughs along the east coast so i expect a lot of nor'easters to um develop just off the northeast coast and that should promote more snowstorm uh, more snowstorms and overall colder winter thanks to more jet stream dips induced by a neutral pattern that's expected to build and then you see that i'm expecting a winter battle zone between the states of colorado kansas missouri tennessee and right around north carolina pretty much along the interstate 40 corridor and the reason why i'm expecting a winter battle zone because it obviously could go either way if we do see that the jet stream dips are a little bit more pronounced than what we'd expect then you should expect a colder and snowier than average winter in the winter battle zone region however if we see less jet stream dips and a little bit more 
warm air surround this area then you should expect more of a rainy winter it's going to be um and there's going to be a lot of times where the forecast will be really close in the winter battle zone where you could either experience very heavy snow or just a rain event so i'm expecting um this area to be a winter battle zone as there is an equal possibility that this could either be a mostly rainy winter or a very snowy winter a much more snowier than average winter for the winter battle zone area and then i'm expecting a warm and moist winter for the southeastern portion of the united states because the sea surf temperatures are currently warmer than average which will promote more convection and will reduce the density for a lot more water vapor to um to have more of an upward motion for more thunderstorm activity to occur and as a result i do ex and also um typically during a neutral panel we see the subtropical jet move a little bit further southward which does bring more troughs to the southeast for it to be um much more moist than average and since and since we're expecting a lot more convergence right around the southeast as a result of an enhanced amount of moisture then we should expect conditions to be warmer because simply in areas where there's convergence it's war it's warmer than in areas where there is divergence during the winter time frame of course because the short wave radiation um in areas where there's high levels of divergence isn't strong enough uh, um won't rise the temperature enough to where it could compare to where an area has a high amount of convection where there's a lot more energy for that temperature to warm up so as all well, typically when there's a low pressure it's warmer during the winter than let's say if you're under a high pressure so i do expect temperatures to be a little bit warmer in the southeast as a result of that and then for a lot of the southwestern portion of the united states i'm expecting it to be very warm but very dry for obvious reasons the drought should dominate um should um um pretty much should stay for the winter time frame it should stay severe and it sh will be only exacerbated by the fact that um that la nina is expected to build for the southwestern portion of the united states so that should bring drier than average conditions and then i'm expecting it to be an extremely cold and snowier snowier than average winter for a lot of northern midwest this includes chicago milwaukee um minnesota as these areas should expect a much colder and snowier than average winter thanks to uh neutral uh neutral to la nina phase that's like the build which does bring more jet stream dips and typically brings a lot conditions a lot colder and snowier than average as a result of an, an enhanced amount of polar um, vortexes moving through the northern midwest so this is my winter forecast for 2022 2023 if you want even more in detail forecast regarding what you should expect this winter in your specific area just make sure to comment down below and i'll make sure to give you guys a more in detail forecast for your specific location regarding where um what type of conditions you should expect this winter for your specific area in the united states so make sure to comment down below if you're interested but anyways guys i thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content and i hope you guys have a great day